Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The latest on the coronavirus outbreak here in San Antonio and around the country. Margaret Berger is live with more details. And a woman found dead on the northeast side of town. How police say she was knocked off her feet early this morning. And outside with live cam, a little drizzle this morning. We're in for kind of a strange weather day. Good morning, I'm David Sears. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Sunday. A little dreary. Well, <laughs> where you are, the temperature is not going to change a lot. But from north to south, there's a wide range of temperatures. It's a little different. That's yeah. exactly right, guys. And that's all because we are seeing a front stall out near San Antonio. So south of San Antonio today, it'll be substantially warmer than those in the hill country. Let's take a look outside right now. Gray, 71 degrees and east wind at about five miles per hour. We've been coasting at about 71 degrees since two o'clock in the morning. On top of that, we do have some areas where we're seeing light sprinkles at the moment. Notice out near Seguin, some quick splash and dash showers and in some places around Bear County, that's a similar story as well. Let's go ahead and zoom on in a little bit into parts of uh, southern Bear County, and you'll notice uh, again that right near uh, 181, right on the Bear County and Wilson County line, there's a really quick shower right there. We'll zoom in. Let's see if it'll work. Sometimes these computers are a little slow. There we go. All right. So right around Calaveras Lake uh, near Elmendorf, there's a shower going on at the moment. Here's a look at where that front is. Uh, it's 71 in San Antonio, but look up in New Braunfels, 65 degrees, 10 degrees cooler than in San Antonio up in Austin, uh, 10 degrees cooler nearly in Kerrville as well. So this front again will stall out and it'll result in very different temperatures. South of San Antonio, highs near the 80s, up in the hill country, highs staying in the 60s in the afternoon. So we're pretty much going to cruise right in the low to mid 70s around San Antonio today. Cloudy with areas of sprinkles and just a few isolated showers as I just showed you on the weather map. East northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and then storms will develop west near Del Rio late tonight close to midnight. I'll be back to talk about whether or not the storms will make it to San Antonio and uh, we'll take a look into the week ahead where we have rain chances just about every day. David. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. A cruise ship passenger quarantined at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland has tested positive for COVID-19. A federal spokesman says this is the only case so far among the 149 passengers. Our Garrett Beringer is live with the latest. Now, Garrett, what do we know about the case? Well, at this point, not much. All we know is that they've been sent to a Texas healthcare care facility. Not this is the 12th case out of the Lackland quarantine to date. Two previous groups have already passed through JBSA Lackland's quarantine at the base, a flight out of Wuhan and another from the Diamond Princess cruise ship. 11 people out of those two groups had tested positive. At least three of them have recovered and been released. It's not clear where this new patient is from originally, but earlier this week, the mayor had announced that only Texans would be quarantined for longer than 72 hours on the base, while evacuees from other states would be sent to continue their quarantines closer to their homes. And a spokesman for Greg Abbott has also said the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services had assured the governor that non-Texans would not be sent to state or local facilities so that those facilities would be available for Texans. Now, Lackland is one of four military installations where evacuees from the cruise ship have been staying at this point, but that their number could depend on their health and whether or not their home states allow them to come back. Federal spokesman had said that some states are allowing the evacuees to return back to continue their quarantines at home. Other states are requiring a negative test for COVID-19 first, and others want them to stay on the DOD installations for the full 14-day quarantine. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Also happening here in the Alamo City, the Metropolitan Health District confirmed a second travel-related case of coronavirus here in San Antonio. It has been confirmed that the patient is being treated at Methodist Hospital. We're also told the patient, who does have a history of underlying health conditions, tested positive following a visit to Japan. He is not connected to any of the groups of cruise ship evacuees. And a reminder for you, travel-related infection is not the same as community spread, meaning the virus was not transferred within San Antonio.
And local health officials are reporting a person that tested positive for COVID-19 here at home came in contact with a private school and daycare on the north side of town. Now, these local health officials believe the risk of exposure to students and staff remain low, but they are directing parents to monitor for symptoms. Founders of the Pineapple School's North Central Campus on Hebner Road told parents in a letter that they were notified of the encounter by local health officials on March 13th. The encounter happened on March 6th, according to school officials. And another reminder for you, places of worship closing their doors this morning while they can be exempt from the public health declaration. Many local churches are still canceling services out of caution. Among the list, the Archdiocese of San Antonio has canceled all Catholic public masses in parishes today. The pastor at River City Community Church says people should still lean on their faith as they move forward. It will be up to pastors to decide if they will continue with small group services. The Archdiocese did make it clear funeral services will still be held with regard to congregation size. And HEB is now closing all stores early as of today to allow time to restock shelves. Officials there, along with the Centers for Disease Control, say you do not need to stock up or panic. Now, all stores will open at 8 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. The new hours going into effect for Central Market, HEB Pharmacies, Jovi's, and Mi Tienda locations. There's no date on when the regular hours will return. Again, this is only necessary because shoppers are clearing shelves, is what HEB spokespeople are saying, and causing long lines, prompting the need for HEB to put purchase limits on certain items. If the new hours at HEB wasn't enough, Walmart decided to follow their footsteps in closing early as well. The chain says the new hours will be from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. to also give employees time to restock the shelves. The stores have been stocking up on food, medicine, and other supplies. Grocery stores like Publix, Giant Stop, and Shop are participating in similar schedules, and some retailers that don't sell food are even adjusting amid the crisis. And while we monitor the latest on the virus here at home, other countries around the world are taking drastic measures. ABC's Julia McFarlane shows how Spain and France are now locking down their citizens and shutting down some of their most famous attractions. Overnight, chaos at Chicago's O'Hare Airport as passengers return home from Europe. Thousands of travelers left standing in a crowd for hours, shoulder to shoulder, waiting to be processed through new enhanced COVID-19 screenings. Through customs and then another line to uh, uh, CDC where I had my temperature taken. Calling the crowds unacceptable, the governor of Illinois slammed President Trump and Vice President Pence, tweeting, you need to do something now. Starting at midnight tonight, the U.S. is banning travel from the United Kingdom and Ireland. The number of travel-restricted countries in Europe rising to 28. Again, Americans in the U.K. or Ireland can come home. Legal residents can come home, but as the secretary will detail, uh, they will be funneled through specific airports and process. This increased travel ban comes as most of Europe, now defined as a hot zone, goes on lockdown. Spain ordering 47 million residents to stay at home for at least 15 days. The wife of Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, along with two Spanish officials, testing positive for the virus. In France, popular restaurants, bars and theatres are shut down. Reports claiming roughly 300 patients in critical condition, nearly half under the age of 50. In Italy... For the most part, Italy is in a ghost town. There is nobody outside in downtown Rome in any of the major monuments. The Trevi Fountain, the Spanish Steps, absolutely empty. Only grocery stores, pharmacies and banks are open. Cases of COVID-19 in the country saw its biggest daily increase yet. And with the death toll now rising to more than 1,400, authorities are pointing to irresponsible behaviour by residents still socialising despite the lockdown. The UK and Ireland now added to that new travel ban. Americans coming home from here will not be affected, but they will have to quarantine for two weeks when they get home. These details covered in a phone call between President Trump and Prime Minister Boris Johnson last night. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. The coronavirus is a topic we are following very closely here at KSAT. If you would like more information on the latest city updates, case numbers, and our city closures, you can head over to our website at ksat.com slash topic slash coronavirus. And remember, when adults panic, kids panic. That's why we're also encouraging parents, teachers, and students to check out 
the KSET Kids newsletter to learn how to keep calm children's fears about the coronavirus. Not only that, Kesa has also provided links to help kids learn best hand washing practices and how to take advantage of time away from school, like trying out one of meteorologist Katie Blake's science experiments. Now you can sign up for our KSAT Kids newsletter anytime at ksat.com slash newsletters. And new this morning, a woman is dead after being hit by a driver of a vehicle on the northeast side of town. Police say that woman was walking down the I-35 frontage road near Wiedner around 3 a.m. when she was hit by that driver. That driver did not stop and render aid. Now, police say a bystander saw the woman and called police immediately. EMS tried to revive her, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. Police have no description of that vehicle. It's 810 and 71 degrees. And setting the record straight after rumors surfaced online, still ahead what a producer from The Bachelor had to say about her New Year's Eve with the leading man. And fake coronavirus test kits confiscated at a California airport where customs agents say they came from. That's next on Good Morning San Antonio. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 71 degrees right now. We're expecting some rain throughout the week, but to find out exactly when and what our chances are, we're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. And welcome back. It is 814. The FDA analyzing what seems to be coronavirus test kits after the U.S. Customs and Border Protection seized them at an airport. Now, officials say a total of six bags were found in a shipment coming from the United Kingdom to LAX. Their labels contain coronavirus and virus one test kit, custom and border protection. Investigators say they are not sure if this is the only shipment of these tests. Businesses changing the way they operate in the coronavirus environment. So many places are being forced to think creatively about how they serve the public. ABC's Zachary Keish has the details for us. As social distancing becomes the new normal, one area taking a major hit, the food industry. We have seen a significant drop in business over the last 24 to 48 hours. Trying to adapt to keep customers coming. We're removing tables to lessen the density of the traffic in the dining rooms. We as an organization are closing an hour early now so that we can bring in a cleaning crew to do one extra hour of cleaning and just sanitizing the building. In North Carolina, some restaurants are staying open thanks to this distillery using alcohol to make free homemade sanitizer. We actually have the correct permits to um, have this high proof alcohol that is a great disinfectant that, that can be shared amongst the business community. But the flexibility of American businesses, both big and small, is being tested. If necessary, fast food giant Taco Bell announced they're prepared to shift to drive through and delivery service. Starbucks making similar moves. Nick Vias, an academic director at USC, speaking with ABC's Matt Gutman, says as people stay home, supermarkets will try to keep up. We're seeing a huge spike of demand. Walmart announcing adjusted hours to ramp up cleaning services and restock shelves. Long lines forming as people flood the stores. Other industries are taking more drastic measures. Apple announcing all stores outside of greater China are closed until March 27th. The early impact of COVID-19 on American businesses is widespread. In Washington state, overall business is down 10%. Experts cite restricted movement, not only in our daily lives, but with travel, tourism, and the flow of products. Risks are very high that the virus is going to do a lot of damage to uh, economic activity. Yeah, that's the state of things. No doubt every part of our lives is going to be affected by this some way, shape, or form. However, the weather will always be the same? <laughs> well, sort of, <laughs> in San Antonio. Well, my job is staying the same right now, which is pretty nice. You know, I'm just here to tell you the weather, and we are currently dealing with a few very light rain showers and sprinkles in the area uh, along a stalled front. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look out toward Guadalupe County, right near Seguin. You can see a few showers ongoing right now uh, near Seguin itself and just south of I-10, uh, as well as a couple of light showers making their 
way up to the radar site, which is actually in New Braunfels that we use. Uh, let's see if uh, we can go a little bit closer to home here. And I want to step off the screen just for a second and take a look out toward uh, areas uh, near uh, San Antonio. Uh, we are seeing a couple of light rain showers just south of San Antonio at the moment, particularly near Calaveras Lake, uh, just to the south of China Grove. So you could see a few showers near China Grove here soon uh, and across uh, Highway 87. So keep that in mind. Just a few splash and dash light rain showers. Other than that, it is cloudy. It is muggy. We are seeing these clouds kind of take hold and we won't be able to shake the clouds today. Take a look at temperature. A little interesting as we turn on the temperatures. It's 71 in San Antonio. Look up to New Braunfels, 65, 62 in Austin, 63 in Kerrville. A little bit cooler up to the north. And there is the front that is stalled out uh, near San Antonio. It's much colder up in, the, up in the panhandle of Texas. It's 39 degrees in Amarillo and 43 in Lubbock. This front is going to be a bit of a booger for us. It's going to make temperatures kind of all over the place. So let's take a look at to the the afternoon. Notice that afternoon high temperatures in the hill country will likely stay in the 60s because of this front. We'll be in the 70s around San Antonio and along Highway 90 and then south of San Antonio. Temperatures are going to be able to get up into the mid 80s. So definitely warm south of San Antonio and a big temperature spread, a nearly 20 degree temperature spread across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Then late tonight, there is going to be the potential for a few thunderstorms around Del Rio. Right around midnight, some of these thunderstorms will develop further west. They could be on the stronger side as well, so we'll keep an eye on that. But as these storms move to the east overnight, they're likely to fall apart quite a bit so that by Monday morning, pre-dawn, so five o'clock in the morning, Morning. We should see a, still see a few showers around San Antonio, but it's not going to be those huge boomer thunderstorms like what we may see in Del Rio around midnight. So it's going to be a wacky day weather wise around San Antonio. Here's what I've got for our forecast. Pretty much coasting in the low to mid 70s all day. Cloudy with sprinkles and isolated rain like what we're seeing out there right now. Uh, and then uh, we'll only be able to see a wind from the east northeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Then those storms will develop late tonight west of San Antonio out near Del Rio and other than that, we're just really going to see isolated rain for the first part of this upcoming week. However, by Friday, we're going to see those rain chances really spike up because a cold front will be making its way across San Antonio. This will be a proper cold front. Our rain chances really pick up because we haven't really had any big systems to help lift the moisture in the air and produce thunderstorms. That's going to change on Friday with the passage of that front and temperatures will dip too. It looks like uh, we'll be near 80 degrees for most of the week. But once that front moves through, uh, we'll cool down into the 60s for highs. Uh, just keep in mind, a few sprinkles and light rain showers today, isolated storms late tonight. All right, but a nice little break at the end of the week. Yeah. I just looked in my weather term guide. I can't find booger anywhere. <laughs> you should have said that cracked you up. <laughs> and it, I just mean it's going gonna, it's gonna to mean that right. we're going to be all over the place. You should have seen David's You're kind of like face. Webster. You add new words all the time. Yeah, so we just add that one today. to the yeah. weather we, we get term it. guy. Thanks, that Sarah. Good. Like that. 821, 71 degrees. And the Bachelor <laughs> fans becoming a little suspicious of who the leading man might actually have been with. Still ahead, what one of the show producers had to say about the photo online. Welcome back, 825. In your morning spotlight news, a producer for The Bachelor is setting the record straight after rumors surfaced that she may be dating the lead man. Mm. Well, it all comes after producer Julie LaPlaca posted a photo of herself in Times Square to social media on New Year's Eve. You know, this was a setup just for publicity. <laughs> Come on. Fans quickly spotted the back of Peter Weber's head, and the rumors began. The network didn't deny the gossip. Of course they didn't while the show was airing. Paca says she did not kiss him at midnight, though. Weber ended the season by calling off his engagement with contestant Hannah Anslus and rekindled his romance with Madison Pruitt. Pruitt and Weber, though, announced their split two days after that finale. Let's see how well the marketing ploy worked. Yes, it did. We're talking about it. <laughs> exactly what they wanted. It, cute picture, though. Yeah. yeah. 825, 71 degrees. American Airlines are making some major changes to their flight schedule. Still ahead, why they made that drastic decision. Plus a TSA worker testing positive for coronavirus. What officials are doing about the people he came in contact with. 
and a virus killing robot. Texas City pushing technology to its limits as the coronavirus takes full effect. That's coming up next on GMSA. Good morning. Thanks for joining us again. Happy I'm Sunday. Sears. I'm Stephanie Serna. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting weekend. Yeah, it's been an interesting week, been an interesting day. It's still 71. It's been 71 since like five o'clock this morning. <laughs> Temperatures are all weird and things yeah. are so strange today that you're over there making up weather words. That's how weird it is. <laughs> He's making fun of me because I said that today's weather would be a bit of a booger for us, but it's true. It's going to be confusing, okay, because there's going to be big temperature differences just all around the KSAT 12 viewing area. It is 71 degrees. It's been 71 since two o'clock in the morning. It's overcast right now. These ceilings are actually lowering uh, as we're starting to see some areas of light rain and sprinkles out there. This is a current look at the radar. Take a look out toward Guadalupe County. Some showers near Seguin, southern Guadalupe County near Nixon Smiley as well uh, out in the Wilson County and Gonzalez County line. Some showers out near New Braunfels around Bear County. We've got some light rain showers along I-35 uh, there between Von Army and Lytle uh, and out toward Castroville just so quick splash and dash showers there as well and near Lackland Air Force Base. Uh, near China Grove, we're seeing some showers too. Uh, and so all of us this morning will have a opportunity to see a few minutes of very brief light rain uh, that'll move through very quickly. Uh, and all in all, though, it's going to stay cloudy pretty much all day long. We have got a front that is pretty much stalled out across uh, the northern section of Bear County at the moment. Uh, and this front is only going to push a little bit further to the south today. It's going to result in rapidly uh, cooling temperatures for the hill country and north of Texas. But here in San Antonio, we'll say temperatures staying right around about 70 degrees in the low 70s. Uh, south of San Antonio, though, this front is not going to make it, so it'll be warmer near Catula, Beeville, Carissa Springs, high temperatures likely in the 80s. So again, we're just coasting in the low 70s today. Sprinkles possible all day long. East northeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. But tonight, west of San Antonio, out toward Del Rio, right around midnight, there could actually be some thunderstorms. I'll be back to show you the future cast for tonight and talk about our rain chances in the week ahead in just a few minutes. And I won't use words like the weather will be a booger. Okay, <laughs> David, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. And if you haven't had a chance to follow the latest on the coronavirus, we have you covered from event cancellations to new confirmed cases. The Alamo City has seen a lot of change. There has been two new developments in cases here at home, one being a Grand Princess cruise ship passenger testing positive for COVID-19 while in quarantine at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. We were also able to confirm that the other patient who tested positive recently traveled from Japan and did not have a history of underlying health conditions. And just a reminder, travel related infection is not the same as community spread, meaning the virus was not transferred within San Antonio. And concern over the spread of COVID-19 has caused schools, businesses and events to close or switch things up. Garrett Berger is live with what you need to know. So Garrett, what has been changing? Well, as you mentioned, quite a lot of things. Now, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a health pa or a pandemic on Wednesday. Then on Friday, we had state and local officials declaring a public health emergency. So we're seeing a lot of people scramble to take preventative measures. First up, this would normally be a big church going day, but many churches have canceled services or switched to online only. It's also a pretty popular shopping day. This is when I normally do mine, but take note that both HEB and Walmart are operating under adjusted hours. We actually had one of our photographers send in a photo of a line outside in HEB as people were waiting to go in. And if you do get to HEB, they're limiting purchases of certain medical and cleaning supplies along with water and toilet paper. And both the Tejano Music Awards fanfare and the St. Patrick's Day Festival River Parade for today have been canceled. Now you can get full details of all the cancellations and changes on our website, ksat.com. Additionally, looking ahead, colleges have extended their spring break and many local public schools have said that they will be closing school down next week. Sorry about that, parents. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar has announced a COVID-19 preparation plan. University Hospital System staff will pre-screen all prisoners before they enter the jail. Any prisoner showing flu-like symptoms will be booked and housed separately. 
BCSO is encouraging other law enforcement agencies to use site and release when possible. The sheriff's office will attempt to handle non-emergency calls by phone instead of dispatching deputies. And they will also work to reduce the jail population by coordinating with the courts to maximize the use of GPS releases for sentenced prisoners. The work release program will also be suspended until further notice. And U.S. soldiers returning from Afghanistan are now under quarantine because of the virus. The U.S. Army's 82nd Airborne Division says more than 300 paratroopers have started a 14-day quarantine. The Army is ordering all soldiers redeploying from any country in the CDC's Level 2 Travel Advisory to undergo quarantine. Soldiers who live off base will stay at their residence while soldiers normally assigned to barracks or don't have a local residence will be quarantined inside Fort Bragg in North Carolina. In Florida, a TSA agent has tested positive for COVID-19. Union officials say every worker who was in contact with that person has been notified. The officer is reportedly at home resting and will remain home until cleared by a doctor. Officials told other TSA officers who were in close contact with that person and was impacted that officer to stay home and self observe for the next 14 days. According to a statement, TSA officials also said they coordinated with the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority and performed enhanced cleaning of all areas where that officer worked. And speaking of airports, American Airlines making new changes to its flight schedule. The airliner will be phasing out long haul international flights from the United States starting tomorrow through May 6th. The change comes amid the new travel restrictions from the U.S. government, as well as a decreased demand from consumers as COVID-19 continues to spread around the world. The White House says President Trump is not infected with coronavirus. It says his test results are negative. President Trump has come into contact with at least two people who later tested positive. He says he doesn't have a fever or any symptoms, but he told reporters yesterday that he had taken the test for COVID-19. Hours later, the White House announced the negative results. The president has not quarantined himself like other world leaders who were exposed to the virus. And also in politics this morning, the Democratic debate today likely to be dominated by talk of the coronavirus. Just two candidates are left in that race, former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders. They will debate in a television studio in Washington without an in-person audience. The debate was moved from Arizona because of concerns about cross-country travel, and it's the first Democratic debate in two and a half weeks. And in other news, this is new this morning. A woman behind bars after she tried cashing thousands of dollars worth of checks in someone else's name. Police records show 34-year-old Roxanne Perro forged a check for $3,000 at a local Speedy Cash. The check was originally a legitimate check with the victim's company's name on it, account number, and routing number on it. Perro had changed the recipient's name to her own and claimed it was for a vehicle purchase. She faces charges for the forged check and fraud. In time now, 838 and 71 degrees for right now. Still looking for hand sanitizer? Well, we know one place that might still have some left in stock still ahead. Now the company says you can get it. And going to the next level to keep a hotel clean, still ahead how this virus killing robot does its magic. We have got a little girl here who is not shy. <laughs> And she, and she can be heard too, but then all of a sudden you scratch right there and the belly's good. You're going to meet this little girl coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. And outside with live cam. Cloudy, a little misty this morning. Might have a little bit out there now. But Sarah Spivey's got the, uh, got the forecast for you. It is strange when it comes to temperatures today. So you want to be back with us and check that out. It'll be fun. It is puppy time. Lex is here from the San Antonio Humane Society. And who is this girl? Uh, this feisty little one is Bambi. She is a one and a half year old terrier mix. And she is just, a, like I said, a feisty little baby girl. She is going to be the watchdog for the house because she walked in the studio, <laughs> barking at me, bent down, started scratching. She rolls over and it's like, okay, belly rub time. Then gets back up and barks again. So yes, you yes. do. Okay. She has a, a, a really great bark for a little girl. She really does. And she loves to play, loves to jump, loves to run around. Oh, look at that. Do? Okay, look yes, all right. <laughs> Oh, just a spunky little thing. And yeah, mm -hmm. perfect. I mean, kids in the backyard, she's going to be just 
running around. Oh yeah, she never runs out of energy. This one. No, you don't, do you? Huh? And you, your Barker doesn't tune down either. So what you got going on? So. Um, Actually, I wanted to let everyone know that uh, the San Antonio Humane Society will be partnering with North Shore Animal League America uh, for the, oh, no, 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 ma'am, no, ma'am, see, <laughs> for the 2020 Tour for Life event. So this event is the world's largest um, mobile pet adoption event. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that's sponsored by Purina. It's happening this Friday, March 13th at the San Antonio Humane Society uh, from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. So what's really great about this event is that we're going to have weight adoption fees, for animals, for dogs and cats, one year or older. Mm -hmm. We're going to have free microchipping for the first 125 public pets and $5 vaccine, uh, $5 wow. vaccine, um, mm -hmm, annual vaccine plans and a lot of other giveaways. So it's a really great event. We're really excited at the shelter. Um, so we really hope to see you all there. So mark the calendar, March 13th, this so Friday. This coming Friday, you're going to be free Friday. Yeah. Can you believe that? Let's hear it. Bark. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I asked for all of you. <laughs> Great guard dog. Little Miss Nice is going to be up for adoption there. 4804 for Edinburgh. <laughs> you got her all around. 467461. All right. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Alex said she was feisty. Way to go, Mike. Yeah. Way to wind that dog up. Yeah, we got Bambi oh. all upset. <laughs> Hey, the soap and fragrance store Bath and Body Works says there still may be hope for customers looking to buy hand sanitizer. The company says some stores may still have limited supplies in stock. There's currently a list of all its online products is sold out, but a banner message is advancing or advising, ad advising, advising customers to check with their local stores before giving up. Don't give up. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says hand washing with soap and water is the best way to clean your hands. And then number two is hand sanitizer. If you can find hand sanitizer anywhere in not just this town, but in this country. I know. It seems to be gone. Most definitely. And the COVID-19 outbreak, testing the limits of what technology can do. The Weston Houston Medical Center Hotel is employing these virus killing robots. They are equipped with UV rays to clean and disinfect hotel rooms. Staff saying that they're especially useful since many of their guests have medical issues. This is the first time the hotel has bought these robots to use in the rooms. It looks like R2-D2. I know, it's very interesting. <laughs> Need some special glasses for that That is robot. I'm insane. sure. Wow. wow, pretty intense looking there. Isn't awesome. It? But if it gets rid of the virus, then hey. Well, And yes. also it'll sell out. Probably. Uh, <laughs> Probably too expensive. Kind of like hand sanitizer. Aww. Yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, the weather, hey, you know, uneventful in the weather. Good. So that's what I like to Good. talk about. We do have a couple of light rain showers around, especially in South Bear County and out toward Nixon Smiley and even in Seguin as well. So let's go ahead and zoom in uh, to those rain showers just to the north of Nixon Smiley, working their way into Guadalupe County. Uh, Seguin's already had a few splash and dash showers this morning. These are very light rain showers. They quickly go, uh, so just know that this is the kind of rain that we'll be dealing with, especially this morning, about 20% chance for very light rainfall. Uh, taking a look around closer to San Antonio, again, South Bear County, getting some light rain showers out near Mitchell Lake, out near Von Army, and out getting closer to Castroville at the moment. So Castroville, you'll probably get a good drink of water here just for a brief second or two, uh, minute or two rather. Uh, and so. That's the kind of light rain that we'll be dealing with today. Other than that, temperatures are going to be the big story. Right now, it's 71 at the airport, 70 at Port SA, 69 at Stinson. But look to the north, a little cooler in New Braunfels, Canyon Lake, Comfort, Kerrville. Winds are from the north there behind a front that is currently stalled out north of San Antonio. So this front today is going to make for very interesting weather conditions. Right now, temperatures not too different from Kerrville to Pleasanton. But you had the heat of the day, and we're going to see really different temperatures uh, by about 5 o'clock this afternoon. We'll stay cloudy, though, in San Antonio uh, with areas of sprinkles and light rain. And then take a look at this high-res future cast temperatures. Uh, near 80 degrees down south of that front in Pleasanton, even mid 80s out toward Catula. Meanwhile, up in the hill country, struggling to get out of the 60s. So very big difference in temperatures because of that stalled front. And then late tonight, right at around midnight, looks like a complex of thunderstorms will develop and push toward Del Rio. So Del Rio could get some good storms tonight. It, however, this system is likely to fall apart as it moves to the east. By the time it'll make it to San Antonio, potentially three 
three o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. It'll be just a few light rain showers, possibly a rumble of thunder or two if it has enough oomph to hold on, but not necessarily banking on it. So in San Antonio overnight, we're going to go with a 30% chance for uh, storms and showers. Today, however, really sprinkles and light rain will be the main story. Cloud cover and then temperatures are just going to coast all day long in the low to mid uh, 70s. East northeast wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Weather setup, we have ample moisture moving in from the Gulf of Mexico. We need upper level support to really produce very good rain, not this nuisancey kind of rain that we're getting today. We have to look out to the west to see that upper level support. A lot of rainfall going on in California, even some snow up in Portland, which is actually pretty rare to see snow in Portland. That low pressure system is going to spin around, really be very slow, bringing us bursts of energy during the week, keeping a chance for isolated rain through most of the week. But by Friday, that low pressure system is going to drag a cold front through San Antonio. And so Friday is our best chance for storms, about a six percent chance for storms right now as it stands and notice that temperatures are going to fall too behind that front by next Saturday will likely only be in the 60s for highs. So just summing things up sprinkles today uh, isolated thunderstorms overnight as that storm system pushes closer to San Antonio that I was talking about. Then during the week really only isolated rain possible It'll be warm with highs in the 80s. Then that front moves through on Friday. We're coast. We're coasting. <laughs> We're coasting. We look forward to that. Temperatures in the 70s. Coast. coast. Not too bad. I like that. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Time now, 849 and 71 degrees. Hey, a quick recap of what you might have missed this week involving the coronavirus. Still ahead, how you can get all the full details to stay prepared and stay safe. And taking a look at your winning lotto numbers, pick three, we have 393, three, Fireball 1, Daily 4, 9856, Fireball 4. Cash 5 is 2, 4, 16, 17, 28. And Powerball 9, 23, 26, 30, 32. Powerball is 8. Power play is 3. Good luck. And before you go this morning, we are staying on top of all the coronavirus developments. Stay with us on air and online for everything you need to know to keep you and your family safe. Right now on our website, KSAT.com, you can see the latest on the cases here at home, a complete list of school closures, how grocery chains are changing their hours to meet customer demands, and so much more. Again, it's all on KSAT.com. Good morning. The president declared the COVID-19 pandemic a national emergency, but with cases continuing to climb, the big question is, what will it take to control coronavirus? I'll ask the nation's top expert on infectious diseases, Dr. Anthony Fauci, what to expect for the days and weeks ahead. Plus, I'll talk to Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin about the continued economic fallout. Our panel of experts is here to make sense of it all, and the Powerhouse Roundtable takes on the latest in the race for 20 20 as Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders prepare for a debate tonight. It's all coming up on this week. Are you drowning in debt? We will have some tips on how you can put your credit card spending on pause. That's coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 6 a.m. There are some light rain showers out there this morning. Oh, that's the other weather graphics. If we can switch over to Max 2, there we go. Great job back there, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, so let's take a look at the radar. You can see a light rain shower right on the Medina and Bear County line. Uh, light rain showers will be possible all morning long for us. We'll call it about a 20% chance and then sprinkles. It'll be cloudy uh, and we'll really just coast with temperatures in the low 70s pretty much all day. East northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Storm will develop west of San Antonio near Del Rio at midnight, but by the time they make it to San Antonio on Monday, they'll really thin out early in the morning, so I'm only going for a 30% chance overnight for storms. Then we'll be seeing light rain and isolated showers during the week, highs near 80 degrees. The good news is we get a front moving through on Friday. That'll bring a decent chance for scattered storms and temperatures will fall into the 60s for highs by next weekend. That and is that good was news. a butterfly and a flower on spring. spring. On Thursday. And it blooms on Thursday. It That's does. Right. Officially.